Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Jess, Jess Pickford, and I am speaking to you from Malaga, Spain. I was going to start off, I was thinking, how am I going to start off? I think I'll start off Spain calling. And I was like, oh, no, no, that sounds like the Eurovision Song Contest. And then I got all sad because the Eurovision Song Contest hasn't happened this year. And I was thinking, oh, I could say something like, or oh, here are the results from the Spanish jury. I was like, no, no, we're taking it too far. Clearly, COVID is driving me a little bit crazy. Oh, hi, Louise. Just saw Louise is on. Lovely to see you. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad this is working. This is a day where not everything has worked for me. I'm very glad this is working. And it's really wonderful um, to be here with you, me and my husband, Andrew, and our three kids. Um, we're here in Malaga, Spain. We've been in Spain for eight years. We are sent by frontline as overseas workers and um, we work in the area of member care. So we care for overseas workers from across um, the world who are often in stressful and isolated situations. And um, we care for them um, emotionally and spiritually through um, inner healing prayer and counselling and things like that with the team here, which we love doing and we love frontline. Oh, it's working. This is amazing. There's Liz and Andrew too. I'm very excited about that. So, um, yeah, so our work is in inner healing. And I felt like God really wanted to speak to us today about healing. And at the moment, um, oh my goodness, we are surrounded by a lot of the opposite of that, which is really, really hard, isn't it? With COVID obviously being so paramount in our lives. And um, what we read and what is true is that so many people are suffering, they're dying, they're getting very ill. And it is, you know, I find it overwhelming. I find it really, really difficult. But I felt like there's something that's also really true that God really wanted us to pray about today and to receive from him. And that is that he is our healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. And that's in Exodus 15, verse 26. And our God has not changed. And I know so much of your lives have changed and so much of my lives has changed. And as many of my life has changed, many days I feel overwhelmed. And I have experienced um, a huge amount of emotional, spiritual and physical healing in my life, miracles from God, gifts from God, but still I can feel overwhelmed and hopeless about what I see going on around me and I forget that God has not changed, that he is still Jehovah Rapha, he is still our healer and he is still our restorer. So I just want to pray for us all today. It may be that you have COVID, it may be that you don't have COVID, it may be that there's something else going on in your life now or a friend of yours or a family member Maybe they're struggling emotionally or spiritually or physically. Our God has not changed. And I just want to read um, these verses to you. It's Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 5. These are some of my favorite verses. So it says here, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed by our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds, we are healed. So Jesus, we just want to thank you so much that despite all the suffering going on around us, or the suffering that we are going through, that you have not changed, that what you did on the cross, it has not changed, that you are the God who heals us, that it is by, by your wounds that we are healed. Jesus did this amazing exchange for us when he died on the cross. He took our sin so that we could have his purity and his holiness. He took our, our wounds, he took our physical infirmities so that we could be healed. And there is so much that I don't understand. I don't want to stand here and say I've got it all and it's, it's easy and it's simple. But this is true. This is what it says in the Bible. And I just want to share a little story um, with you before we pray um, for healing. Um, and this is one of my stories of healing. And this was about um, five years ago. I was ill with a virus, not COVID, obviously, and um, just a normal virus. And I thought I was getting better. Then suddenly I started to feel a, a huge amount of pain in my body. And it was so bad that I could barely breathe. And it, I was in agony and I didn't know what was going on. But we had to call an ambulance. It was it was pretty frightening. And I was I was really struggling to breathe. And I was like in my head because I couldn't talk. I was like, God, what do I do? What do I do? And I felt like God say, um, worship me. So I couldn't do it out loud. So in my head, I was singing worship songs. And then the ambulance arrived and then the door opened. And as the ambulance man stepped inside of our house, instantly I felt an angel behind me and it had the most pure water. I think it must have been the water of life. It was completely pure, completely clean 
and it just, ro he, he like had this kind of jar and it kind of rolled down my back straight through the center of my spine. And as it went down my back, I was completely healed of the pain. Now I was overwhelmed with gratitude, <laughs> but I was mortified because by the time that ambulance man had made it into the living room where I was, I was completely healed, completely well and completely fine. And I, I swore to myself in that moment, I am never going to fear sickness again. God's healed me so many times. That's only one story. And, um, but I still, I still can get scared of sickness. And I just really want us to be able to acknowledge that too, that it's okay to be anxious. It doesn't mean we're lacking in faith. But God is, is our healer. And I say that testimony because it says um, in the word of God that we defeat the devil through the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So let's remember and be telling ourselves and our families too of all the healing, all the good things that God has done for us during this time. And many years ago, perhaps, just remember those things, declare them, speak them out, because they help defeat the devil and anxiety in our life. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to pray now. And please join me in prayer for healing. It may be for you, you have an emotional issue. I've experienced a lot of emotional healing to be free of anorexia. And for me, I had chronic fatigue syndrome. And God did that through healing me emotionally and spiritually. That then healed my body. That's my personal story. I know it's not everyone's. But I want you to know it could be emotional, spiritual, or physical. But we're praying for you now. Or maybe if there's nothing that you need prayer for, then think of a, a family member or friend. So God, you know all of our needs. You promise in Philippians 4 verse 19 that you will meet all of our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So I'll just say that again. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God, I thank you that you meet all of our needs because of who you are. It's not about who we are. It's according to the riches of your glory in Christ Jesus. That's what it is about. So I thank you that the pressure is not on us, that we don't have to jump through hoops for you. It is about you and who you are. And I just pray, Lord God, that you would bring up inside of us now an area perhaps where you want to bring healing. Maybe it's an area of disappointment. It's an area of anxiety or loneliness. This is such a lonely time for a lot of us right now, Lord. Maybe it's something physical or it's for someone else that, that we know. Lord, would you show yourself as who you are, as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, the God who restores. And I thank you, Lord, that you have promised to restore to us all the years that the locusts have eaten. That is a promise from God, and I believe a word for today for you, that God promises to restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. And God, I thank you that it's only you who can do that. And I was reading something today. I've been feeling quite tired. I don't know about you. I call it the COVID drain, just feeling drained. And I was always thinking, oh my goodness, as well, I've lost a lot of sleep over the years with my beautiful babies, who are now not babies. But I kind of feel like I'm still exhausted from all that all that lack of sleep. So I thought, I'm going to Google, how long does it take to catch up on the sleep deprivation after having young kids? Okay, what I found did not make me feel good. What I found said, basically, it's impossible that it's possible to catch up on 20 hours of missed sleep. But after that, you're done. The aging process, the damage is done. And you can only do what you can from there on, you know, from that point, you, you can have good sleep from there on, which will restore your body. But more than 20 hours lost of sleep, you can't redo um, the restoration you've missed out on. But I just felt like God saying no, no, that is not our God, because he is the one who restores us. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. And whatever's been spoken over you, or may whatever may have been someone else's story, it's not your story, because God is with you. And it is by his stripes, by his wounds that you are healed, whether that's emotionally, or physically, or spiritually. And so God, I just want to pray, where any of us may have areas of disappointment where we haven't seen you come through. And I think of the lady with the issue of blood who for 12 years was not getting any better. In fact, she was getting worse. And it says that she had tried so many things and she was getting worse. And I think I would have lost hope by then. But she knew all she needed to do was touch the edge of Jesus's robe and she did it. She pushed through all those people and she just reached him 
and she got a healing. And God, I pray that we would have that type of faith for us and also um, for our family and for our friends and anyone and everyone who's struggling now with hopelessness with the situation that we're in right now. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that you are close to the brokenhearted. And I just want to pray for anyone now who feels that maybe their heart has been broken. It may not be completely broken, but maybe it's just been affected by what's going on right now. Something of yourself has got lost. And just before I came on and I was, um, and I was praying, I could hear Jesus shouting out, Lazarus. Lazarus, as he called Lazarus out of the team, out of the tomb, he was weeping, and then he shouted, "Lazarus, come out of the tomb!" And Lazarus came back to life. And I feel like God is maybe shouting to some of us because God's heart is breaking over the parts of us and maybe the parts of our friends and families or neighbours that just feel a bit lost right now. The parts of us that perhaps through these last, well, it's nearly a year now, isn't it? Feel a bit broken feel hidden, feel pushed aside. God is calling you out. He's shouting. He's shouting to you. He's shouting your name and he is heartbroken for you. So I'm going to have a look to see who's here. Oh, Mike Pendre, it's working. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Thomas. Oh yes, Jesus saves. Oh, it's lovely to see, to see everyone here. I can see my little girl Rosie's on as well. She might be a bit bored by now. She's probably, she's probably left. But um, yeah, it's really wonderful to have um, you all here. I'm sorry, I keep looking at myself. It's very difficult to look at the camera and not yourself on this. I know it's very vain, but I am trying, I am trying. But yeah, I just, I just really wanna pray for us all that we would have some time and space to receive the healing of God where we need it, to remember that he is our Jehovah Rapha. So God, I thank you that you understand that a lot of us are broken right now in different places. And I know for a lot of us, this can be quite triggering for us when we're in a time of stress or uncertainty. Often that brings up our, our biggest struggles or our, or our bigger, biggest weaknesses. And I just thank you, God, that there is no shame with you. You understand our weaknesses. You even say to us to delight in our weaknesses because then you can be strong. And so God, I just pray that you'd help us to feel encouraged that you are on our side, you are for us, you are not against us, you are with us, you are never going to abandon us, whatever we are struggling with, whatever of our weaknesses are at the forefront right now, there is no shame. So God, help us to come to you boldly, to approach the throne of grace boldly, where we will find help in our time of need. And God, help us to not let shame hold us back. Because Jesus took our shame in that beautiful exchange that he did on the cross for us. He took our shame. It was the devil who was made ashamed, ashamed of. That's not quite right. That doesn't quite work, does it? That, that speaking there. But um, I remember I struggled with shame a lot for many years. And then one of the verses that really stood out to me, I'm sorry, I can't quite remember where it is. But where it says is that Jesus made a mockery of the devil, of the spiritual powers. He made a mockery of them when he defeated them on the cross and something just stood out to me. It was like, oh, whatever I've done or whatever has been done to me, whether that was years ago or whether that was today, because of Jesus, it is the devil who has been made a mockery of. He is the one who is ashamed, who carries the shame because Jesus took it for me and he made a mockery of the devil. Do not, I pray God, help us not to let shame keep us from approaching your throne of grace boldly. And um, just to finish off, um, I want to share with you a bit of funny story about healing. I hope this amuses me, amuses you as much as it amuses me. And it's about our little boy Oscar, who is six. So it's a funny story, but it's quite profound as well. So um, about a year or so ago, he ran in in the nighttime, clutching his ear, and he was crying, and he was like, "Oh, my ear hurts so badly." And so it was really clear, you know, he had an ear infection. He was in a huge amount of pain. So I pulled his mattress into our bedroom. We set him all up in our bedroom and I lay down next to him. I told him he didn't have to go to school the next day. I'm cuddling him, stroking his hair. Then I thought, I'm going to tell him about Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 5. So I told him how Jesus had taken his sicknesses and he'd taken his earache. Jesus had really t actually felt Oscar's earache on the cross. He'd taken it for him so that, um, so that Oscar could be well. So I said, would you like to do this exchange with Jesus? 
you give him his earache and then your earache and you can receive his wellness. And Oscar properly thought about it and he said, no, I don't want to. And I knew exactly what was going on in his little head. He was thinking, if I do this now, then I'm going back to my bedroom. Mum's not going to lie in bed with me when I, till I fall asleep. And also I'm going to school tomorrow. So I was like, okay, Oscar, you can keep all of those things, every single one of them, and um, you can still be well. If, if Jesus heals you now, if you receive his healing, you can stay in here. I will lie in this bed with you and you don't go to school tomorrow. And instantly he was healed. And, um, you know, it's a very cute story, but a funny story that sometimes we can carry little blockages to our healing without even realizing it. And I'm just going to finish off with this verse, which is Psalm 42, verse 7. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. So I just want to pray, God, that as we finish off now and as this evening as we go to bed, that we would connect to you, Lord, from our deep places into your deep places, where we may have any little blockages or little ways of thinking that, um, that might stop us fully receiving from you. And this is my story. My whole story has been removing my deep blockages in my deep places to God's healing and restoration for me, because our God, Jehovah Rapha, has not changed. So I just pray if anyone is like me or like Oscar, and deep down inside where they don't even realize it, they're holding any little blockage to receiving from you. I know that's not everyone's story, but just in case it applies to you or anyone else, Lord, would you meet us in those deep places and help us to call out to you from our deep places too. So, um, yeah, it's been wonderful to be with you all. I've got to stop talking now. That's a shame. Matt, it's lovely to see you. See you? No, see your message. Janet, I really love it. I miss you all. And um, Lord, I just pray tonight that this would be a night of restoration, of healing, of receiving from you, the God who restores and who promises to restore all the years that the locusts have eaten. Thank you, Jesus. And bless you. Have a beautiful evening. In Spain, we say, besitos, kisses, besitos. Bye.